So um, tonight, most of the event will be speaking with our phenomenal panelists who will be sharing with you their experience in the arts world and as Scholastic Awards jurors um, about what they're looking for in standout art portfolios. But before we get started, I wanna pass it off to my colleagues who will be helping me to facilitate the event so that they can introduce themselves. Uh, Manny, do you wanna kick us off? Happy to. Um, so hi everyone, um, I'm Manny Blasco. I am a programs coordinator here at the Scholastic Awards. Um, I assist um, my colleagues also here, Katie and Hadel for the Region at Large and New York City programs. Mm -hmm. And I am honestly extremely excited to be here for this panel tonight. Um, we have really amazing panelists here with us and um, I'm super thrilled to hear um, what they have to say just as much as you all do. <laughs> and I will pass it off to Hadel. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Hedo Enriquez. I am the New York City Scholastic Awards Manager. I am from the Bronx and I'm also an alum of the Scholastic Writing Awards. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here. I'll pass it on to Talia. Hi everyone, my name is Talia. I'm a coordinator on the National Programs team. Part of my job is responding to your inquiries through the info at artandwriting.org inbox. So I bet that I may have spoken to some of you here um, attending the webinar tonight through that email. I'm very excited to be here as well. And I'll pass it back to Katie. Awesome, thank you so much, Talia. Um, so as I mentioned, we are going to spend most of the night with our phenomenal panelists. We'll be getting started with them in about five or 10 minutes. But before we do that, uh, my colleague Talia will be introducing a little bit about the Portfolio Award with the Scholastic Awards and scholarships available through the Portfolio Award. Um, after we have our panel conversation, we are going to have a Q&A. So please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box throughout tonight's session. We ask that you not use the chat box for your questions and that you do direct them to the Q&A box. We will be predominantly using the chat box to share resources with you all throughout the evening. And it's a space where you can connect with each other. If you wanna crowdsource some ideas, see where people are from, feel free to have fun in there. But again, all of your questions should be redirected to the Q&A, which is available in the ribbon at the bottom of your screens. You have the option in the Q&A box to upvote and comment on people's questions. So to help us see which questions are most popular, if you see that your question has already been asked, rather than write it again, please use the upvote button um, so that we know that more than one person wants to hear about that. And you can also comment on each other's questions if you're like, I wonder the same thing. And here's a little related addendum. Um, so that will just help us keep track so that we can get to everything that you want to know. And now I want to pass it over to Talia to share a little bit about our portfolio awards. Thanks, Katie. So to begin with, just a little bit about um, the Scholastic Awards, which is presented by the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers. Our mission is to identify students with exceptional artistic and literary talent and present their your remarkable work to the world. And this includes opportunities for recognition, exhibition, publication, and scholarships. Students um, to participate in the awards must be in grades seven to 12 and ages 13 and up. Submissions for the awards open on September 1st, which is coming up sooner than you think. Um, and your deadline for entries varies depending on your region. Um, and you'll be able to find that when you sign up and enter through our online portal. This is um, a preview of all of our many submission categories, um, nearly 30 categories of art and writing. I'll let you take a moment to look at them here and they can be also found um, on our website with many more details about the requirements and details for uh, each category. And I'll also drop the link in the chat for the category page on our website. So the category that you're all here for tonight, of course, is the art portfolio. 
uh, to submit a portfolio, students must be in grade 12, so a graduating senior. And the requirements for the portfolio are six unique works, one personal statement, um, which discusses your personal connection to the work and what may have gone into it, as well as one artist statement, which describes your processes um, used to create and select these six works. All of the portfolios that are submitted are considered for our top awards and scholarships. So that's the gold medal portfolio award, um, which comes with $10,000 for the artist and $1,000 for the educator of that artist. And the silver medal with distinction portfolio award with a prize of $1,000 for the artist and $250 for the educator. Also drop the link here for the portfolio scholarships for more information about these opportunities. So you may be wondering what the portfolios are judged on. Um, important to note is that we use a blind adjudication system. So the judges that are looking at your work do not know anything about the student's identity, meaning your age, um, your location, your ethnicity, and other similar personal details. Um, the three core criteria for judging these portfolios, as well as all other entries, are originality, technical skill, and the emergence of a personal voice or vision. And I'm happy to tell you that our panelists are also jurors, so they will be able to share even more about what they're looking for in an outstanding portfolio. So with that, we're ready to get started, and I will pass it over to Hadel and Manny to begin um, asking our amazing panelists some questions. Awesome, thank you all um, for joining us, Alyssa, Dan, Ale, and Jessica. I want you all to uh, introduce yourselves uh, to our community. Uh, so will you briefly uh, give us a, a quick intro? Um, why don't you start us off, Alyssa? All right. Hi, everybody. Sorry, that was my barking dog a minute ago. I don't know if that came through to everyone. Um, so I am Alyssa Dumeyer. I'm Director of Children's Education at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art in Indiana, and I am uh, the Regional Affiliate for Northeast Indiana and Northwest Ohio Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Um, I have been in that role for about five years now, um, and I am also an alum, so the awards have been really important to me for a long time and really excited to talk with all of you tonight. Great. Can we hear from you, Dan? Absolutely. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited that the 147 people in this room watching this, this amazing portfolio that are, well, there's some professionals here. So the 135 of you, I'm sure there's great portfolios. My name is Dan. I am the Associate Dean of the School of Art and Design at Alfred University, which is a small um, school up in Western New York, kind of the Rochester Buffalo side of New York. And my role here today is, uh, is I review portfolios constantly, and, and I do it for Scholastic. I do it as, as a region at large member, Alfred University um, graduate program students and faculty will look at your portfolios. But then I also do it for admissions. So I will review portfolios around the country and it's a little bit of different criteria but so I'm happy to kind of let you inside my mind of when I'm looking at portfolios with some of the things that, that I like and some of the things that uh, really make a lasting impact. So happy to be here. Thank you for joining us Dan. Can we hear from you Jessica? Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Walker, Director of Integrated Design at Parsons School of Design, where I teach and I probably learn more from my, my students than I actually teach. I, I really love working with young people and talking about art and portfolios are one of my favorite things to discuss, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, I've been a regional juror and a national juror for the Scholastic Awards, um, which has been an incredible experience. And at Parsons, we have the unique pleasure of having um, hosted the exhibition for the national awards. And I have to let you all know that it's the most incredible work that happens on our campus throughout the year is, is that work that's housed. So I'm originally from Southwestern Virginia. So if anybody's there out there from Appalachia, uh, welcome to the call. Nice to see everyone. Thank you, Jessica. Can we hear from you, Alejandro? Yes, hello everyone. Thank you for joining in tonight. Uh, my name is Alejandro Guzman. 
I'm a visual artist. I uh, use painting, sculpture, installation, uh, and a lot of performance in my work. And I'm, I'm really honored to participate tonight and share with all of you attending tonight and everyone on the panel uh, any approach to application uh, processes because I know sometimes uh, it's very difficult uh, to, to gather uh, so many ideas and, and artwork into a short uh, kind of lived application. So hopefully I could uh, be assistant with any questions or anything like that on advice and uh, I hope to have fun with all of you. Fantastic. Um, so I can take it from here. So first, I just want to say thank you, um, you know, Dan, Alyssa, Alejandro, Jessica, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, super excited to have you here. Um, you know, let's just kick it off, get right into it. So the couple questions that we have prepped for you are some of the most common questions that we get from students. So this should be um, very valuable for all of you out there. Um, and we're gonna do this in sort of a rotation um, system. So we'll ask um, one panel panelist the first question and then others can jump in afterwards. So um, my first question is, describe the most outstanding portfolio you've seen. What stood out to you about this portfolio and why has it stuck with you? Alyssa, would you like to kick us off? Sure. Um, I think I have to shout out to our gold medal portfolio from our region this year, partially because it's kind of the freshest in my head, but it also is um, a, obviously a very outstanding portfolio if it received a gold medal. Um, so it is by Olivia Luong and it's a phot photography portfolio. And they're sort of documentary, like film still photographs. And they feel very cinematic. Um, and portfolios consist of six works. And so there are, um, one of, I think the strengths is that there is not one work that feels out of place and they all kind of give each other strength. Like if there was one missing, um, it would, it would, there would really be something missing and they all kind of feed off of each other. Um, and they're beautifully shot and beautifully lit. They're very much a mood. Um, and really, um, really strong emotionally, really, um, her, the models that she used, I know she was a model in a lot of them, um, were really, really, here it is. Um, so, so it tells a cohesive story, um, I think is, is the greatest strength here. And, um, they're stronger as a whole than they are kind of, they're strong on their own too, but, um, really as a whole, I think. Is, is where that strength comes from. So, yeah. Wonderful stuff. Does anyone else have any uh, other uh, things they wanna add? Anyone else have any? Um... If, if we go back to that uh, aforementioned artist, the photographer, for a second, please, just to show an idea that is really strong is a uh, personal narrative. And having your own personal narrative here is, is vital or is crucial to having a strong application. Because for me, having uh, almost a story in the application informs the panel, okay, what is this artist uh, saying? What is this artist doing? Um, the shape, the line, the color, there's a lot of things that go in uh, to storytelling. And for me, this work is, is wonderful uh, because it, it reaches that, uh, it meets that goal of storytelling. And even if you're working in abstraction and color and there's nothing figurative, uh, the idea is still to have uh, narration because for me, those applications that do tell a little bit of a story, something to just, just to chew on a little bit as a creative misunderstanding for the audience, 
to reinterpret or anything is, is powerful. Um, so for me, I agree, Olivia Luong, the, the, the photographic series tells a, a rich story. And, uh, I, you know, we look out for that in applications and, and panels and everything. So all the students um, are listening, I would, I'd definitely take note on your own uh, freedom of narration and storytelling. I'll add that I think we, when we mentioned the criteria earlier, that personal voice is what's going to put you over the top. And that's what I think everyone's saying about the storytelling is that your technical ability, the craftspersonship, it's got to be strong, absolutely. But we're going to see so much strong work that has the technical skill. All right. Then the next category is originality, which, which you can call creativity. The big thing that is going to, I'm, I'm giving you kind of things to warn you against, is if things look like they're classifying, if they look like you're completing it for your art teacher and your art teacher gave you a theme, okay, that it, it, we're going to see a lot of that. We're gonna, and we're almost going to be able to tell what that theme is. But it's that personal voice that we get the sense that you're taking it outside of the assignment, you're an art maker at home, that you are invested in. Now, if you have an awesome art teacher, I don't mean any disrespect, because they're inspiring you to make art outside of the classroom. But really think think about how when you look around your art classroom, what what have we not seen before? What is it and, and how is your personal voice shared with us? I'll just add uh, also kind of building on the storytelling piece that everyone is speaking about. Um, that's certainly what came to mind when I thought about what's a really standout portfolio is certainly something that tells us about the maker and, um, you know, who's making this artwork. And one portfolio comes to mind that I've actually never even saw. But it was so impactful that I remember it because someone told me about it. So that's how much of an impact it made on me. Um, a student once applied to Parsons with a portfolio that detailed how she planned her family reunion. And she shared how she had to do research. She included her family tree. She put in the invitations that she made for this. She documented the family reunion through photography and video. And it clearly told this amazing story about the beginning, middle, and end of this journey she went on to create this family reunion. And um, I think that that's just something to think about, telling a story with images, with um, things that may not even, you may not even think are art, and, and throwing that in and kind of, it, it just kind of has always stood out to me as like a bold move. Thank you all so much. Hale, do you want to take our next question? Sure thing. Uh, thank you for your reflections. Um, I guess I'm wondering what makes the difference between a good portfolio and an amazing portfolio? What takes it to the top for you? And maybe we'll hear from um, Jessica first. Yeah, I think um, some of the things that have already been uh, talked about, I just want to reiterate, obviously, storytelling, trying to think about moments in your practice where you discovered something new for yourself. I think we are all going through an incredibly challenging moment in our human history, whether you are responding to um, in increased social unrest and um, the things that are happening in the United States on the news. Uh, whether you're responding to the challenges happening due to the COVID pandemic. I think those times when you as an artist, as a creative person can talk about your work and how you are trying to make a difference or make people think about um, your life and why you, your, mat your voice matters is the kind of work that really stands out in a portfolio. Um, so I know we're gonna be talking a lot about unique voice and vision and um, I think the more you can craft that in a portfolio, the better. And that's what really stands out for me. Thank you for that. Can I hear from you, Ali? Yes. Um, for me, it was always um, 
sometimes the challenge to snap out of uh, what my art is versus what an art of the application is. And the art of the application, most times, I wanna say 99 times out of 100, uh, my applications differ a little bit from my actual artwork because I'm a performance artist and how do I create something loud and obnoxious on a 2D image or a slide or an application? So for me, I look at the application as, okay, I'm getting ready to do a performance. Slide one is intro. Slide two is, is getting the, the foundation, the groundwork. Slide three is, okay, the story is starting. The story, the four, okay, it's, and now you get to your, your rising climax and it's either, do I leave the application where it's a cliffhanger and you don't know the rest of it because you wanna to get to know me and get to know the artwork? So for me, it's if I'm looking at 500 applications in, you know, of a course of time, um, you know, we want to be engaged also. So I see applications like performance. The more you're able to engage me with what everyone is saying, the, the story, um, the storytelling, the narrative, the, a, a lot of the, the facets of, of what makes a good application, uh, for me, is that engagement. And so those that, that uh, focus on looking at your images one through 10 over and over again, and if you get bored looking at your, your own performance of your own images, then you already know that your application is not going to um, you know, have any feeling over 500 other applications and you want your artwork to always have feeling because we're in the, we're in the realm of expression. And so, um, those that do have that kind of performative level in the application is something I look forward to, um, and, and consider, uh, um, like amazing, true to the definition. I love that, Ale, keeping the audience engaged, for sure. Um, Alyssa, can we hear from you? What makes the difference between a good portfolio and an amazing portfolio? Yeah, um, we've kind of spoken a little bit to the criteria, um, but I think I think Dan said that when we really see that personal vision and voice coming through, that is the thing that, that really pushes it. Um, because we want to know, we want to see from your point of view, and we want to learn about something in a way that only you can show us that. Um, and so I think when that comes through with, with strength, that, that's hard to do. Um, and so I think that's what really takes it to the next level. Awesome. Dan, can we hear from you? Sure. I'll, I'll go at it from two different angles. The first one is some of you might be watching this going, I do not have a personal voice. I'm 17 years old, and the most interesting thing about me is my, uh, I don't know, such and such t-shirt or, or whatever. And you, that, that might be okay. That, and so when you look at that criteria, the creativity and the technical skill, all right, might carry your work to the next level. So I come from a university that's really, really big in the sculpture, really big in the ceramics. You might say, my ceramics isn't going to tell my personal story, but the technical skill and the creativity and the risk that you take and the chances you take and the experimentation can be that next notch. So I, I, I was the one who, who and I'm going to, I'm going to go right back to personal voice because it is. When, when a piece moves you, when an artist is vulnerable and they're communicating, and Alejandro said this, said this much more beautifully than I will, I feel, I feel honored to be brought into your, into your life through six pieces. Six pieces, I want to know you more. I want to find out more about that artist. You are granting me access to a story that might be truthful. It might be a story of your own. Sorry, my sensor light went out. Is it might be it might be a truthful story or it might be your creativity and it might be a fictional story. We don't know, but we want to know more. Um, like we it just leaves us going like wow, I want to know more 
about this story and this student just like gives a little glimpse of their life. So on one side, the personal vision, the personal vision to bring it to the next level is really letting us inside your life. And if that's not your strength and you're more of a technical artist and a creative artist, is really like honing that craft and doing something that we haven't seen before. So it doesn't have to doesn't have to be equal amounts of everything. It can be really strong in one category and put you on that um, gold level. Great, thank you, Dan. Definitely show us something we haven't seen before and leave us hungry for more. Uh, Manny, can you take us away uh, with the next set of questions? Yes, happy to. Um, so next question I have for everyone. What do you think about or advise students to think about when selecting works for an art portfolio? Um, let's see, Alejandro, do you wanna kick us off? I'm sorry, I was answering a, a question on the, on the chat room. Could you, could you say the question again? Of course. It's of cool course. in there, the chat room is good. Thank you all for, for joining. I'm, it's it's live in the chat room, the question A in the chat. I love it. Q&A is coming soon. We're ready. Um, okay, so the question was, what do you think about or advise students to think about when selecting works for an art portfolio? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, hmm. I know that uh, repetition is the is the mother of all inventions so what i do in my studio is right before i'm i'm preparing for a show there's there's 20 pieces in a show so it's it's the application it is the application and i will look at it over and over again if it's if one or two look boring to me like i don't want to see it again i'll draw i'll try to make a duplicate and in that duplicate, something will happen because you want to invent something that you don't like already, almost. Or, or image number three is not good enough. Um, you know, the idea is to just keep working through it as an artist and keep challenging yourself through repetition until you find your own proper uh, voice and freedom of expression. I am uh, 43 or 44 years old. I'm pretty old. And uh, I continuously, I will draw the same thing over 10 times, 20 times, 100 times until I get the right one that says, this one has something that I want to say, not what someone else wants to say. Something that has a personal vision, like Alyssa describes, the, the narrative, that Jessica was describing is is on point. Not to reiterate um, those those, but but that to me I think is one of those um, uh, things of repetition. And then if you don't like it, get it out of there and start with something fresh, a fresh new idea. Because you know there's there's millions of ideas a second in here. Uh, don't fall victim to just one. As an artist, we should, tons of ideas go out there. So don't be afraid to just let go of a few that you don't like. It's okay to grow from those. That's what I would, I would recommend. I don't know if that was a question. But... Repetition is key. I love that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jessica, you want to go next? Sure. I'm also taking notes from you, Alejandro. This is great. Um... <laughs> So advice on um, what to include or consider when putting together your portfolio is to know your audience. Um, you're going to have 10 different portfolios depending on what kind of opportunity you're applying for, whether it's college admission or a grant or the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Um, you know, it's the same with a resume. When you get older, when you're applying for jobs, you have different resumes depending on what kind of positions or what kind of futures you're imagining for yourself. So I would say know your audience. Some places are looking for very specific things. Technical drawing, uh, drawing from life. Uh, a lot of places will be very specific about that. 
other other opportunities like scholastic are much more open-ended right where they're asking you to put your best work forward and um, that gives you a lot of space to curate and to think about editing your work whether it's a story or uh, just showing your best work which is always a good a good theme um, and I know there's also a lot of questions around is it better to have a portfolio that's focused within a single kind of making or is it better to show a range of work that these are all the different things I could do? And I would say to that, you have to think about what's your own perspective on breadth and depth, right? Are you a multidisciplinary artist? Then absolutely show that range. Let us get really excited about all the different things you can do. But then just as we were looking at that amazing uh, film and photography portfolio that was very concise and specific in terms of medium, what a wonderful way to, to showcase your vision for a single way of working for a single medium. Um, so both are great options, I would say. It depends on how you work. Fantastic. Um, let's see, Alyssa, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I want to say um, also related to the question of whether you should include multiple media. I will say during 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 judging this year, our jurors got really hung up on a portfolio that had all paintings and then one black and white graphite and charcoal drawing. Um, so if you're going to mix it up, like mix it up. Um, I think sometimes during the jurying process, judges can get hung up on one work that kind of feels out of place. Um, in an otherwise really strong portfolio. And we do, to an extent, look for theme, but you can approach that in so many different ways in the Scholastic Awards anyway. Um, but yeah, great point about knowing knowing where you're applying to and what they're looking for. Um, but a theme doesn't have to be like, I'm gonna make a portfolio about horses. Um, it can have a lot more, a lot more depth to it. You can approach it as like, Maybe you ask yourself a question and here are six different ways I'm going to answer that question or um, but it should feel cohesive, um, whether that is a theme or whether that's cohesive through your voice or through a story that carries through all of the work. Um, maybe you just have a really strong style and it's cohesive in that way. Um, a theme theme isn't essential, but it should they should go together. Yes, to cohesion. Um, thank you for sharing, Alicia, Alyssa, excuse me. Um, Dan, you want to take it away? Hi, everybody. I, I think Jessica, I think every point I was going to make, which is awesome, is just realize, so if, if you are doing this as a 12th grade senior portfolio, the deadline of September 1st is, is perfect for you to, this, this is your, I don't want to call it your test portfolio, but this is your your first stage in creating your college application portfolios, and they will be different. And most of those those portfolios are going to require more pieces. So six pieces is is great, but it's a very different to, to create the six piece versus a twelve or a fifteen piece. Like everybody's saying, is six allows you to curate and do a theme. I want to do I want to curate and and create a common theme when when you have. 12 by any means, with, with you, when you're applying for college, then you start really rolling out the experimentation and the, the depth of your exposure materials. And you do include things that aren't your strongest, but it shows that you're, you're not afraid to take chances. For Scholastic Awards, though, just being on the, on the panel side, which I think really, 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 really spoke to, is we want to give you advice that's going to move you like to that gold level and yeah, like that one, that one, hey, I took a chance here and here's something that doesn't look like anything else. Sometimes it does like just mentally mess, mess with the panel and they might, might like it. And going back to um, my thought about like the, the storytelling is that like, each one, even, even the order in which you submit them, each one needs to build on um, the last and, and really kind of um, tell, telling the story, but also making us kind of dive deeper and more and more interested in how we to talk about the different steps. So I'll stop there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. And thank you um, to everyone um, for a question. Um, I'll pass it back over to Hadel for our next one. Sure. 
so uh, as artists, it takes an extreme amount of courage to put our work out there, uh, to put all of our vulnerabilities out there as well. So what advice do you have for students who may be nervous about using their authentic voice, knowing that their portfolio will be viewed by others, uh, and in the case of the Scholastic Awards, possibly published next to their name? Um, Jessica, can we hear from you first? Yes, um, I just wanted to say that um, it's a great question and it never goes away. And we are all nervous about showing our personal voice and showing who we are. And we get better at it by doing it over and over again. Um, we love making art. It's the most joyful thing in the world. And then sometimes sharing it with other people is overwhelming and it doesn't feel right sometimes. And mm -hmm. that is just the way of the art world. <laughs> and so you get better at it over time. Um, you know, I think one of the things that I'll reiterate is um, you probably have amazing art teachers. They are probably assigning awesome assignments, but maybe your unique voice comes from things that don't always happen in art class. Um, maybe they are things that you discovered on your own, in your own time, and maybe it doesn't even look like art right now, and it's just still formulating. Try to document it, think about it. It's your creative practice. It's still kind of generating out of you, and these things take time to document. Um, so, I just, I think you might have to rethink an assignment. For example, we see a lot of like pictures of hands and, you know, we're tired of seeing the pictures of hands sometimes. Like, I'm just going to be really honest and say it. <laughs> um, we want to see interesting things with the hands. Maybe you draw the hand every day for a calendar year and we see a grid of 365 hands. Rethink the assignment. You know, that's where you can re come in with your personal voice. Um, and rethink things. I love that with the hands, Jessica. <laughs> no, don't do that now, because Jessica just said it. So don't <laughs> do something like that for yourself. Yeah, let's hear from you, Dan. <laughs> um, so, so my my role, uh, I went I went to school for art, I have an art degree, but I, college student development was my master's. And the four years or five years that you're in college, from 18 to 22, 23, your identity development is is the you, you think maybe you develop the most at, at an early age your identity development is is going to be through the roof when you go away to college you're going to be on your own you're going to have to find your voice there's all all of these studies done that this is critical and we are unfairly asking you at 16 and 17 to put yourself out there and th there's no there's nothing I can say other than then we thank you for your courage. We thank you for being brave and finding your voice and right. putting it into a an art form that art has always been about expression. It's always been about identity. It's always been about students who sometimes haven't found their voice elsewhere in different different ways to express yourself. So it's challenging. It's it's always going to be challenging. And Jessica said that it, it, for for artists who are you know, five times your age, it's still about your identity and putting yourself out there for critique and putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. So I'm just going to say thank you. Thank you for being here. and Thank you for sharing your vision. Indeed. Can we hear from you, Ali? Yeah, I'm a performance artist. So I always, uh, I get nervous for like three months before a performance and usually after a performance, I run to the bathroom uh, because that's how nervous I really was or, or am at that moment. And it's one of these things where I don't think um, people get used to it, like they're um, these kind of things. And it's happened ever since I was in high school playing soccer and it was a championship game or something, I would still get nervous like that. And the thing is, I would listen to that nervousness and embrace it instead of deflect it and know that every single human has the same exact kind of uh, impulses and to not be scared of it because in this world, it's, it's, there's just so much fun and so much fun and beauty and, and things 
to learn and love about and to explore that it's endless. And I figure if you're already here, you're already on that voyage to more exploration, either it be writing, theater, anything. So uh, for me, I, I, I embrace it. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, on a sculpture and I'm so nervous, everything about the sculpture is horrible. It doesn't look good. But I'm so nervous about the sculpture, it's informing my performance. And then I won't do the sculpture anymore because I was so nervous about doing the sculpture that the performance is the real work. And that is what the audience enjoyed. And so it's one of those things where uh, Jessica's right as far as uh, repetition, learn how to do it creatively to create your own voice with the hand. Dan had said like, you're already, you're, 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 coast, you're getting ready for this next voyage. And so that's this thing about, it's, it's okay to be nervous to get on that boat. It's, it's, it's totally okay. And it's okay to do it on your own as well. Uh, I did it by myself. Um, and I didn't show any artwork to anyone. And it took me a long time uh, to figure out what I wanted to like first show my mom or first show my brother. And I was in college. Um, I wish I was as smart as you 154 or 159 that are already in high school or already thinking about, wow, there's a voyage. It's called art. Let's figure out how to get on that boat. And that's what you're doing with your application. And, and just go for it and just always go for it. I don't know, that's my two cents on that. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for that offering. Alyssa? I'm not sure if I can add anything to that. Um, <laughs> I think you've all done an amazing job. Um, but I think, yeah, again, just knowing that every artist that you that you know, every artist whose work inspires you have has been there before. Um, everybody's got to take that first step to put your work out there. And it is scary, um, but it's important. And just like you connect with, like think of your favorite artist, um, your work might connect with somebody else in that same way. So by putting it out there um, and taking that step, you can be really important to someone else. And and yeah, and your work will change over time. Like doing it in high school and then trying it again later in college, it's not going to be the same work, but it's, it's that step, it's that act of putting your work out there and you'll learn along the way. Thank you, everyone. Can I pass it on to Manny? Yes, thank you, thank you. All right, so our next question is, the Scholastic Awards require both an artist statement about the portfolio and a personal statement about the author. What would you like to learn about the portfolio and the artist in each of these statements? And how are they different? Um, Dan, would you like to kick us off on this one? Yeah, this is a, this is a tough one because uh, I'll be I'll be totally honest, and I hope I hope the scholastic staff is okay with me saying this. Is that this process is, is it's pretty cumbersome. The amount of applicants, okay. So you imagine this: you have you have a panel of three um, three jurors looking at your work. There, it's gonna it's going to become it's either going to be brought up by the moderator to read. Or it's going to be requested by the panelists, I'm sorry, by the jurors to read. So sometimes if, if it's not intriguing, if they don't want to know more about the artist, if, if they see a piece or they see a portfolio that they're just saying, nope, 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 like they're not going to spend the time on your artist statement and, and your vision. They're not going to, they're not going to get to that stage. But that doesn't discount the importance of it because once they read, once they, are attracted to your portfolio, they're going to want to know more. That's a, that's a great sign. I mentioned earlier is that some people may be telling a story that is their own personal story, and some of them may be storytelling and and doing a fictional kind of um, story. And that I don't think there's I don't have a preference, but there might be preferences. There might be 
there might be some jurors who are like, oh, this is like, this is like connected to the artist statement, it is connected to the medium that they're using, there's all these different, but that is, I think, going back to that other question, what what puts it over the top? If if this system that that's structured, if they, if they can recommend only two portfolio winners or uh, different stages of different numbers that get passed on, that artist statement may make the difference. So don't don't take it lightly. Just be truthful. Have have your art teacher, have your parents proofread it. Um, it's I know that sounds, but but in in life is you just don't know what um, you know like what's going to put put you into the next level of of excellence. So um, I'll stop there. But um, yeah. Thank you for the insight, Dan. Awesome. Um, Alyssa, do you want to go next? Yeah, um, I'll add to that and say, like, when we when we do read portfolio, um, our statements, artist statements, and personal statements, um, I want to know like your thought processes and your decisions that you made along the way. What what were your intentions um, as you go through? Because sometimes, I mean, there can be question when you look at look at artworks, especially if it's abstract or um, more experimental, did you mean to do this? Um, so we, we want to know what you were thinking about um, as you um, chose the works for your portfolio, as you created them, and um, those, those kinds of decisions that you made along the way. So think about, um, try to put yourself in an outsider's shoes, somebody looking at your portfolio for the first time, what questions might those jurors have about this work? Um, and trying to kind of get ahead of those because it's your chance to do that. Thank you. Um, Jessica, do you wanna go? Sure. Um, I think for an artist statement, I would encourage people to think about um, the what and the how. What do you make? Be able to speak very clearly about that. I feel, I feel like we forget sometimes to say, I make drawing, I make painting, I make performance. My work is conceptual. It's 2D, 3D, 4D. All of these things are really important um, things to be able to say about your work because it helps us understand that you understand where you're coming from and can think about it. And I think also in an artist statement, it's important to talk about the process. We care deeply about the materials and the methods that you've chosen and want to hear, why did you dig up that mud from your backyard for that ceramics project? Why are you shooting on Super 8 film? It's kind of like in math class when they say, show your work. We want to see the process. It's part of the story. And um, I would say about the personal statement is more about the who and the why. Um, what makes you inspired? What makes you tick? Why do you make that work? Are you the first artist in your family? Are you from a family of artists? Are you um, telling the unique story of your heritage? Um, you know, that is all really important things to include in a per personal statement. I especially love that point you made about how the statements are really part of your story and it really adds to your art. So great point. Um, let's see, Alejandro, you want to finish us off? Yeah, I think um, what Jessica said is, is, is on point as far as um, let the reader know what you're making and what you're about. Um, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here and just, uh, I'm not good at writing. My brother is a writer, he works at CBS News. I love him. I'm not, I'm all visual. Uh, therefore I go through poetry. All my artist statements, Anything about myself, if it's written on paper, I'm gonna make sure it's poetic enough. Just go back and look at the 10 images <laughs> because I'm not good at writing. It doesn't work in my section of the brain. I went through a lot of uh, tutors and everything before high school, uh, college. And for me, my salvation was poetry. So if sometimes I have to have a meeting and, I, and I'll just read 
uh, out loud over and over again what I'm going to dictate at the meeting. And repetition, if I don't like how it sounds, then I already know it's not going to sound right to other people. So I don't know. I, I've got to play something different, a different card. I'm sorry. But mm -hmm. I do believe Jessica uh, has one of the stronger um, uh, applications when uh, writing the statement because a lot of jurors need a little bit of foundation work in order to direct the narrate, uh, what they're looking at. Uh, sometimes it's so abstract, you don't know if it's a drawing or a painting or a this on an image. So I always start off, I'm a performance artist. First, so people know what they're getting into with me. Uh, I'm a painter. So then people know what they're getting into. Um, so that truly does help, even in using poetry. And can I can I say one other thing? I I may have been a little dismissive about the artist statement, but I want to clarify that for your college for your college portfolio, extremely extremely important that that your school that the school that you're interested in you know, like that you that you're spending that time and, and that you're developing it. And I don't mean to be dismissive about it with Scholastic Awards. I'm just being honest in that like, it, it's going to require us to want to dig deeper and and this panel to do it. So it so it's a great it's a great starting point. So don't don't shortchange yourself. It, it's really important that you have a strong art statement, but you're also developing towards having your college application where you're going you're going to need to kind of be able to put your your voice on paper in in a, a non visual way. Yeah, yeah. The for for college, one hundred percent, because in college you're looking at thousands, tens of thousands of applications, and for college, I do agree with what Dan said. For uh, for the scholastic is one thing, or or for a, an award, or for a grant, or for a residency, uh, or just for some materials. But I agree with Dan and Jessica and Alyssa, you want to be clear and concise to, I'm a painter, this is what it's about, this is what I'm focusing on. It may change in time, but this is the focus. And to be focused in on it is very important and have, and read it out loud, repetition, read it like 10 times. Because if you don't understand what you're writing, no one else will. Trust me, I know. <laughs> They, well, thank you all so much again for sharing. Um, honestly, I feel like I've learned just as much as anyone else did. Um, so we are um, running a little bit behind on time. So I think we are going to jump into our Q&A if everyone is cool with that. So I know we had um, a bunch of questions come through. So I'm gonna turn it over to Katie and Talia um, and we can kick up our Q&A session. Thank you, Manny, and thank you all so much for that incredibly enlightening and thought-provoking conversation. I know it sparked a lot of thoughts in the Q&A box. Um, since we were just talking about college applications, I'm actually going to go to our second most popular question first, and we'll come back to the top one. The question is, what would you say you're looking for when it comes to portfolios during the college admission process? What makes portfolios stand out? I'll jump in. Um, it's funny because the, the Scholastic Award categories are the exact same as what I look for. I just have different names for them. So I have the three seeds of a good portfolio. What used to be, I used to call craftsmanship, I call craftspersonship. It's, it's, your, it's your, your technical skill, but it's not just that. It's, it's seeing a piece through to completion where you know when to step away and when a piece is done. That's the first one. Creativity is my second one, and everybody's creative. I know that, but I'm looking for something outside of, of the class assignment. And the last one is character, which is which is scholastic personal voice. I want to see something that gives me a hint that I want I want to know more about this artist. So mine and a quick soundbite. 
Yes, as the other college representative here, I would just build on that and say, um, at Parsons, we are a design school. We're an art and design school. And I think that's important to say because we have majors at Parsons that aren't really like tangible things in the world that you might consider like traditional arts. We have a business and design program. We have service design, things where you are thinking about systems and um, you may not be able to show yourself as a systems thinker only through traditional drawing and painting. Have you made a robot before? If you have, we'd love to see that. Um, we want you to think outside of the box and tell the story of like what you made in your basement at midnight. <laughs> Maybe that's kind of scary, I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> now we, I know what we're gonna see in these, this year's crop of students. Um, but really, how did you uh, play with coding? How did you play with different kinds of materials that aren't traditional ways of making? Um, that's what we love to see in portfolios. And, and the statement is the place where you can talk about your history, where you're coming from, uh, who you are as a maker and thinker, and we, we love to hear those stories. Thank you both. Um, the next question from the chat and maybe we can um, start with Alyssa for this question. What would you say the biggest mistake is that is made in portfolios? Kind of a big question. This is a big question. Um, well, I don't know if it's the biggest mistake, but I think um, it's kind of being too obvious with a theme or just barely scratching the surface. Like we wanna see an in-depth exploration. We wanna see your personal ideas on an idea, personal ideas on a concept, um, not just like here are six different views of this object. Um, go a little bit deeper, um, I think, is one thing. Um, and then I, I think I already said earlier too, is like having one piece that doesn't fit in, um, try to think, think more cohesively, make sure everything kind of works together. Thanks, Alyssa. That's great. Um, does anyone have anything to add? Alejandro, Jessica, Dan? Um, oh, the sure. last question on how to make uh, what was the last? biggest mistake. Yeah, the biggest mistake. Right. Right. I've made a lot of those in uh, my applications. So I know <laughs> what big mistakes are. I've been doing a lot of um, uh, learning from those mistakes. So, I, wow, man, there's so many. I would say uh, personal uh, voice. Um, you can't do that, just like Alyssa said, with multiple photographs of the same object, of just one object for your entire portfolio. Let's, even if that one object you know is, this is me, and I finally got there, and I'm about to submit my application, and all the images are great, and I've got details, and I've got one inside and one outside, and focus on the storytelling more than pay attention to this one object. Uh, pay attention to your, your freedom of expression and that as an artist, no one can ever take that away from you. And that is like part of the fun of uh, doing the application is like, okay, is this me? Is this who I am? No, I'm not that person anymore. I cut my hair a long time ago. Uh, you know, so the idea is um, just to be a little confident and not, um, yeah, and, and show narrative. I think for me, to, to, for the story is the most important thing and not just to be proud of just like one thing, I think. I'm gonna throw in two pet peeves real quick. Um, with portfolios, more on the college level. The first one is 
you might be a phenomenal photorealistic illustrator, okay? And I know that after two to three illustrations, but do not fill your portfolio with eight pieces that just show me the same exact, the same exact talent, all right? I would rather see three or four pieces of sculptures or painting that are subpar than eight phenomenal illustrations that don't hit any new notes. So that that is one. And then the other one, this hopefully your teachers have told you, but like fan art of um, you know, like animation styles that you like, or adventure time or or um, Sailor Moon, or like we, we want to be fans of you. We we are interested in what you're fan you're a fan of, but we like we don't need to see that. We want to be a fan of you. So so really stay away from fan art um, of, of just kind of taking another artist's work. And um, unless you're doing some sort of phenomenal creative twist to make it your own, um, it really just doesn't go over extremely well with the art community. Thanks so much, everybody. Our next question is about theme. Um, would you encourage students to stay away from political points of view? Would that be considered risky, especially during the political climate and unrest in our country today? Whoever wants to jump in and, and start this one off, go ahead. I would say, yeah, like it's freedom of expression, freedom of choice, freedom of voice, freedom, it's freedom. So your personal vision comes in that storytelling. If that's the story you feel you need to tell, then go for it. But uh, I highly agree with Dan and Jessica and Alyssa, like uh, show different facets of who you are through sculpture, through drawing, not to be repetitious with just one photo realistic Hey, I'm an, I can do an orange, I could do an apple, I could do a banana, photorealistic. So I, I feel honored to be the first one to answer that question. Thank you, that's an awesome question. Yeah, go for it, go for it. I'll, I'll just say though, it's just, it's just, it's not enough just to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm socially conscious. It still has to be good. You know, it still has to be creative. It still has to be like there's a lot of students like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this note. I'm gonna hit this politically, I'm politically charged note. But you still gotta make it, you still gotta make it creative. It's gotta it's gotta be thought provoking. It can't be the same thing that a thousand other people are doing. So bring bring your voice. Yeah, I will also say that um, please be honest in your work. Have it be the reflection of your personal view on that political um, or social or cultural um, idea, uh, make sure it's coming from a place of your own experiences and maybe not speaking for other people about what assumptions you might think they, they have. Um, you are testing out, I'll just speak in terms of a college level portfolio, you are testing out where you want to go. If any place is going to censor you, do you really want to be there? <laughs> Um, you know, you need to uh, make sure that you feel comfortable as an artist and a designer and in, in the space that you choose to go with your time and your precious money. Um, yep. But, you know, make sure that you use your voice to, to test that water and to feel great about where you're going. Yeah, agreed. I would say no, no subject is off limits, but make sure that it is coming from your own experiences. Um, not just, I saw this political idea, I'm going to take that or like a sign that you saw or this is I think, you know, most most art jurors probably tend to have kind of liberal political leanings. Don't just make the work that you think they want to see. Um, have your own your own point of view coming through. Thank you all for sharing. Um, we've seen a few different questions in the chat about this topic. So I'm just gonna kind of combine it into a super question. Um, we're seeing a lot of people asking about 
What if they're scared to fully commit to art or to sharing their personal voice in art? How do they feel confident sharing their artwork and um, you know, pursuing a path that's arts related? Does anyone want to kick us off? Dan, maybe you look ready. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's a question. Art is, is risky. Art is not structured. Art is, you're taking, you're taking a chance. There's ways that you can pair art. Um, you know, Jessica talked about uh, design and, and there's my, you can minor, but art as, as a career field is you, you are, you are taking like uh, a leap of confidence in yourself that you want to live a certain life of expressing yourself and creativity and all these awesome things that your parents may not, um, may be nervous about. And it's, it's constantly being savvy. It's realizing the fact that in today's society, creativity, this is scientifically, psychological studies, creativity is on the decline, all right? Because of technology, because of less art, art and music in, in school, the number one thing that Fortune 500 companies are looking for are creative problem solvers. So you have to be able to justify that you're that you pursuing a career in a creative field is not just about you expressing yourself. It is it is the way that you're going to interact. It's the way that you're going to problem solve. It's the way that you're going to make every community, whether it's professional or personal, better because of the gift that you have. That's like a really condensed version of why I advocate for the arts in every in every place I can. Um, and but it is. It's not the structure that some people are comfortable with, but there are structures within art that, that absolutely exist. If you if you're a little nervous about a creative career, is then you structure it a little bit with with specific um, specific concentration. But it is it is um, yes, it's an adventure, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'll stop there. Thank you, Dan. Would anyone else like to weigh in on that question? Jessica, Alyssa? <laughs> I was just going to say, if you find the answer, please share with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's one of those where, where I'm uh, always listening to my mom. Uh, she always says, Alex, you could have been a veterinarian because you love animals. <laughs> <laughs> and like I buy my own pizza, you know, and my own Converse. And it's one of those where uh, I knew I wanted to become an artist because it's fun. And you're with uh, the most fun people on the planet. Uh, scientists are artists, mathematicians are artists, doctors are artists. And the bottom line is creativity and believing in yourself. And the good thing is, you know, uh, the art that um, is good is usually not the one that is a copy because it comes from yourself and, and from your own story. Uh, I used to just draw uh, surfboards and people surfing because that's all I knew in high school. And then, you know, I started doing that so much that it became boring to do it over and over again, just a surfboard. And then you put a doggy in there and then you, you, you make it fun. And you, then the one surfboard turned into a whole story of people at the beach, bicycle riding, uh, gym, reading, sleeping, eating. Uh, friends and family having fun and it became a story uh, but when I was a freshman all I did was surfboards over and over again until I came to that realization that art is fun and that's why I stuck into it other than that I don't know what the question was <laughs> awesome. sorry but I think I answered something <laughs> Thank you. I think that was great. I think you got it. <laughs> Did anybody Listen. else have a final thought on this question before we move on? I, I, can I do one, one more soundbite? Is that 
is that the career fields that are going to exist in 10 years haven't even been imagined today. They're going to be imagined by artists. So who, you know, I'm old. So like, I remember pre-internet and everything that everything that's created is has a degree of creativity and vision being it being able to have a vision and make it happen and that's that's what artists do and i also just want to say i'm working with seniors in college right now at parsons and they are the most optimistic amazing capable folks who are already getting job offers in a global pandemic and they are reimagining the idea that artists aren't employable or um, they just, it's so clear to me how this generation is rethinking that. And um, I think that it's all on us to kind of rewrite that narrative that the artist is the starving artist. Um, I think things are changing. And, and I want to agree with Dan, like when I see job descriptions from Google and elsewhere, it is the first thing is creative thinker. And that is what we do as artists and designers. That's our top skill is creativity. Yep. Thank you so much, Jessica. So also thank you so much to everybody who's put their questions into the Q&A. Hopefully we've addressed um, at least some of what you were wondering about. We, have, we are going to move on to our last question of the evening, um, which is a lightning round um, do's and don'ts for your portfolio. So I'll just throw that out to whoever wants to kick it off. I think I already said my do's and don'ts. I'll be quiet. I'm most likely confused. So what was the question again? One more time. Your do's and don'ts for a portfolio. Your do's and don'ts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the do is keep it interesting somehow. Keep your audience engaged like a good movie, like a good, like your favorite song that no one else knows about except for you. And nobody knows that you like this song and only you know it engages you and it hits that uh, right uh, chord for you uh, musically wise. It's that kind of feeling we want to know or we want to hear when looking at one of your uh, applications. So the idea is to, uh, uh, to do what you love, what you like, what you're passionate about, and you're never going to go wrong. Uh, I know what you don't want to do is try to be, uh, uh, you don't want to copy. You don't want to just, um, you know, you don't want to draw Superman 10 times. It's been done uh, a million times so much where we don't want to see Superman anymore. So the idea is to, you know, um, just do what, what's right for you and for your soul and all that. Because the don't is, is. Um, will get you into more trouble because your application will not look as strong as you want it to be. So like, just do you and you'll be fine, you know? Oh, I'll just jump in and say, do tell a story. Um, do take images of your work. I mean, really amazing work with really horrible photographs. Ah, that's the worst thing in the world. Um, you don't have to have a fancy camera, even a phone. Take your artwork outside, let the sun light it. Um, you can keep it yeah. simple and get great images of work. And um, also I would just say, if you are feeling brave, I hope you are, uh, get advice from people who you admire, share your work with other people and chat, chat with them. One of the wonderful things about friends and family is talking about art with them together and getting their input. and. So I'd encourage you to share your portfolio with other people. Yeah, that's good advice. I thought if I don't, I want to share. My don't is don't get discouraged if you don't get a Scholastic Art Award. Okay, this is you are going to put yourself um, out there repeatedly, 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 and if you make a connection with two percent of the people that are looking at your work, that is a success. Because those two percent of the people. 
um, are going to be moved, and 2% of, of the world is, is enough to uh, make a career of. And Scholastic is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity with money and support and profile, but it but it's just the beginning. So don't get discouraged if it doesn't work out for you. Yeah, agreed. It's not it's not the only opportunity out there. Um, other don't is don't don't play it too safe. Take some risks. Um, but yeah, I think I think Alejandra said it best. Like like just do you. Um, just yeah, show us who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, a huge round of our applause to our incredible panelists. I learned so much. I know that we got through a lot of questions tonight. Thank you all so much for your time. If you could grant me but one more minute, I just want to share with you a few next steps before we part ways so that we can keep in touch and we can be sure to see your incredible work come September. So a reminder, as our panelists mentioned, document, document, document your work. Take pictures of them. Make sure that if you're um, doing a 3D piece, you're taking pictures from multiple angles. Uh, make sure that the lighting is good, that it's high quality. All of your work for the Scholastic Awards will be entered online and we wanna be sure that we can see it clearly so that it is judged appropriately. Sign up for an email reminder. If you would like us to remind you September 1 that it's time to create your account and enter your piece. And of course, don't forget to create your account in the fall. If we did not get to your question tonight, please feel free to email us at ral at artandwriting.org, the email address up on the screen here. And of course, connect with our, us and our panelists on social media. You can find all of them at the handles here. I will leave this up on the screen for a moment and we will also include this information in the description of the YouTube video when we share that link with you later on. So again, thank you all to all of our incredible panelists for joining. Thank you to Talia, Manny, and Hadel um, for helping to facilitate and run this event today. And thank you to all of our attendees and participants. You have been incredible, so engaged and asked such insightful questions. I hope you all have a lovely evening and I can't wait to see you all again soon and hopefully to see some of your work. Yes, bye, thank you everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah.